A new study says global temperatures are set to rise beyond the target limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius unless there are rapid and immediate reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. The UN Climate Panel predicts the coming decades will bring more extreme weather events like the floods and wildfires we've seen in the past weeks. The authors say the report is a final reality check as policymakers prepare for a crucial climate summit in November. Let's bring in uh, Ajit Niranjan from our um, environment department. Ajit, the IPCC's working group co-chair called this report a reality check. What does he mean? Well, this report shows, with to the best scientific evidence available, just how much one single species, humans, have changed the planet in the space of a few hundred years. And the changes that they find, um, as you said earlier, they're widespread, rapid and intensifying. And that means everything from heat waves getting hotter, to Arctic ice melting and things that will last well beyond our own lifetimes. So uh, what's the message then to governments around the world? So world leaders pledged uh, the Paris Agreement in 2015. They pledged to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures and ideally to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now this 1.5 degrees C target, that's going to be broached in the next 20 years or so. And in all the scenarios that they consider that these models kind of look at, in all of these scenarios except for one of them, they stay above 1.5, they keep getting worse. And the one in which we do manage to bring things back down by the end of the century and kind of meet this 1.5 degree C target, that involves rapidly decarbonizing the economy and sucking enormous amounts of CO2 out of the atmosphere. And governments so far aren't, aren't yeah, doing none, that. None of which we're doing. Uh, no, and one of the kind of effects of this means that, I mean, firstly, people need to start adapting immediately. So as the report stresses, climate change is already here. Heat waves have already gotten hotter. Um, some of the numbers on this are actually quite hard to believe. I mean, I've just got this in front of me. And so, I mean, with one degree of the one degree of warming that we've already seen, a heat wave that used to hit once a decade has become two, three times more likely. Mm. Now, that doesn't sound like so much, but if we let warming get four degrees Celsius above what, what they were before the Industrial Revolution, and that's something that we're not quite on track for, but if we're unlucky, could still end up with, then that heat wave occurs nine times in 10 years, nine years out of 10. If we look at the heat wave that used to hit once every 50 years, here's where it gets really difficult to wrap your head around. At four degrees of warming, a heat wave that used to hit once every 50 years will occur 39.2 times. Mm -hmm. That's, That's most years. That is truly frightening. Um, one expert said uh, that uh, this is the last IPCC assessment that can make a real difference in policy terms before we exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius. So is it too late? It's never too late. And all the scientists I've spoken to have stressed heavily that every single degree matters, every tenth of a degree matters. It's constantly a process of reducing the amount of harm. We have already changed the climate by burning fossil fuels, heating the atmosphere, releasing gases that act like a greenhouse. All of this has made weather conditions more unpredictable. It's made them worse. It's shifted kind of this distribution of what we're experiencing. But if we stop burning fossil fuels, then we can stop these problems. Greenhouse gas concentrations will reduce in the atmosphere. And that's something that we can do something about. Mm. So reducing CO2 and other greenhouse gases is one thing, and this probably the most important thing, but an adaptation to the effects of climate change that we're already seeing as well. Is, are we doing enough for, in terms of adaptation? Exactly. So they are both important and adaptation is something that's so far not being talked about very much and needs to be a big, much bigger part of the picture because we are already experiencing the effects of climate change, as you said. And at the minute, with like one degree of warming or so, then good adaptation can actually make a much bigger difference. The problem kind of for humanity, I guess, is that the more it warms, the less you can adapt. There are limits to adaptation. Mm. If sea levels keep rising and we have the multi-meter sea level rise that's kind of projected in the report, or at least that the report says it's possible after the end of the century as sea levels keep rising, then how high can you build a sea wall to that? Yeah. But in the short term, you need to do it. Ajit Naranjan from my environment desk. Thank you very much, Ajit.
We stay on the subject. For nearly two weeks, Turkey has been battling its most destructive wildfires in living memory. The fires have forced the evacuation of tens of thousands of people in southern coastal regions. An estimated 100,000 hectares of vegetation have been destroyed. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has come under fierce criticism for his handling of the disaster. DW's Julia Hahn reports from Milas on the Aegean coast. Thousands of ordinary Turkish citizens have been volunteering there to help fight the fires. Eren Temrin is not a forest worker. He is a tech consultant from Istanbul. A week ago, he dropped everything and rushed to southern Turkey to join the fight against the wildfires. Now, he and his friends are helping authorities here in Milas, on the Aegean coast, to build fire breaks. Areas free of vegetation that act as barriers to stop the flames from spreading. The fires grow very fast. I have never seen anything like this before. In some places, it really looks like scenes from hell. I couldn't just sit at home and watch. I had to come here and do something. Chainsaws, helmets, protective glasses. Eren and his friends have paid for the equipment out of their own pockets. They are among thousands of volunteers from across the country who have joined efforts to contain the blazes and help those affected. Turkey hasn't seen such devastating wildfires in decades. I believe that some of them were caused intentionally. But of course, the climate crisis and the hot weather also play a role. When it all comes together, it leads to disaster. A disaster firefighters have been struggling to get under control. Over the past days, dramatic scenes have unfolded as desperate villagers and volunteers stepped in to help contain blazes raging near their doorsteps. The extent of the destruction in the fire-hit regions is unprecedented. The flames have turned huge tracts of forests and fields into grey landscapes. According to estimates, at least 100,000 hectares have been destroyed, an area bigger than the German capital Berlin. Hardly any green trees, as far as the eye can see. And the people who survived this inferno are increasingly asking, how could it come to this? And what is the government doing to make sure it won't happen again? Local mayor Mohamed Tokat, a member of Turkey's main opposition party, has been sounding the alarm for days. The flames nearly destroyed a thermal power plant in his district. On this parking lot, he and his team are now coordinating aid for those affected by the fires. Tokat says the region did not receive the help needed from the central government. We are in a very dramatic situation. It's unacceptable that a powerful state like Turkey does not own any functioning firefighting planes. We wouldn't have lost that much forest if we had more planes ready when the blazes first erupted. We are facing a worst-case scenario and we were not prepared for it. In the forest of Milas, Eren Temren and his friends are taking a short break. They have been working non-stop the few last days, in temperatures of around 40 degrees Celsius. But now isn't the time for recriminations, Eren says. Now's the time to help stop the flames from spreading and save what's left of Turkey's forests. I mean, while massive wildfires in neighboring Greece have left hundreds of people homeless as well and forced thousands to evacuate on the island of Evia, many residents have been brought to safety by ferries while others have stayed behind to help the firefighters. More and more people in Greece are talking about the fire of the century. In three regions, wildfires are burning their way through forests and towns. North of Athens, in the Peloponnese, and on the island of Evia, rescue workers and residents are exhausted as they fight the inferno. The extreme heat and strong winds keep fanning the flames. Firefighting aircraft are only now able to reach some of the devastated areas, 
the planes were needed to protect Athens, where the situation is now stabilising. Meanwhile on Evia, the island is divided by a wall of fire. Ferries and naval ships are on standby to evacuate any remaining residents. Many people in hard-hit regions are angry that there wasn't more support to fight the fires. Nothing remains of our house, of our possessions, nothing. We have been abandoned. For three days we have been alone without any help. Despite evacuation orders, many residents stayed behind to defend their homes, often with only a garden hose. As part of an international effort, emergency crews from Germany and across Europe have been dispatched to Greece. But locals are asking why so few of Greece's own firefighting aircraft were ready for action when the fires first ignited.